This is gonna be a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> I'm having a blast, I don't know about you. It's bookish. <laughs> Hello my bookworms, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney and today's video will be my September TBR looking a little bit different and I'll explain why in a second. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. You're probably thinking, Sydney, where's the spin the bottle TBR? And I'm thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> I quite literally have been searching for my jar of prompts for an hour. I have my board, I have my bottle. I think you can see my bottle. It's literally right there. Why didn't I point with this arm? <laughs> that was right there. But for the life of me, I cannot find my little mug that has all of my prompts and rewards, punishments, all the things. I have no freaking clue where it is. We still haven't been able to unpack entirely, hence the boxes. <laughs> it's somewhere. It's somewhere down here and I have literally searched in every bag and box that I think that it would be in. Can't find them, I'm giving up because I have to leave in less than an hour for my next fitting for my wedding dress. And I have to film this now. So we are doing something so different. <laughs> Cute little preface, all right. You could probably tell by the title of the video that it is involving RuneScape. <laughs> If you don't know what RuneScape is, I'm really sorry for you, but basically it's this like open world <laughs> online game where you create a character, you can build up your skills, it's like Animal Crossing, but prehistoric. <laughs> it's friggin' awesome, okay? They have a new school version that are like up to par with today's technology, but I played RuneScape when I was a small child and they kept a version of RuneScape with those old school graphics. And I have rekindled my love for this insanely nerdy game. Over the last week, I have played quite a few hours, not read a whole ton. And I think I'm already level like 21 or 22 or something. It's going really great. <laughs> So I posted on my story a few hours ago, someone needs to tell me to film and not play RuneScape. And then Becca, one of my dear worm patrons, <laughs> replied and said, why don't you film while playing RuneScape? When I saw it, I was like, haha, that'd be cute. But then a light bulb went off in my head after an hour of searching for my TBR game necessities. And I decided, why the hell not? I could just sit here and tell you about the books that I want to read next month, but I haven't done that in so long. Like, had free will to choose a full TBR, that the thought of that actually gives me anxiety. <laughs> I need some sort of structure. So what we're gonna do is I am going to log in to my RuneScape account. <laughs> this theme music. <laughs> okay, we're gonna talk to random people that are not real people, you know, like computers within the game. And depending on how the conversation goes, I'm gonna take something from the conversation and I'm going to choose a book off of something that goes on in the conversation. I don't know, we're flying by the seat of our pants right now, people. We're doing the best that we can, but okay. So I have, hi, this is me, ready? Hi, look at how cute I am. I gave myself pink hair because um, I miss my pink hair. Um, obviously I have a gold cape. I got some black mime boots. I won that in a contest. <laughs> Um, okay, but focus. Last night while I was playing, I ventured into a new town <laughs> that I haven't been in since I was probably 10 years old. I don't even remember the name of it. It is Falador. And uh, right now we're just chilling in some sort of a uh, court. Uh, these are guards. I can't talk to them, but I could kill them, but I'm gonna let them live for now. Um, I also, look at this. I have uh, a pet Kit Kat. Ready? Look at, oh. <laughs> um, I want him in a quest. <laughs> Oh my God, I love this. Okay, so I can talk to this person, Haskell. So let's go, let's go talk to Haskell. Haskell is obviously a farmer of some sort, so I can ask, can you give me any farming advice? And she said, you can put up to 10 potatoes, cabbages, or onions in vegetable sacks, although you ha can't have a mix in the same sack. So <laughs> what reading prompt could that be? Honestly, okay. <laughs> This advice from our dear friend Haskell, it's saying that you shouldn't mix different produce. You shouldn't mix important or different things in your life together. Now, this is gonna be a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> Maybe Haskell just sucks. But basically, she's saying that you shouldn't put different produce in the same sack. And this is the book that I'm gonna be choosing for this advice from our dear friend, Miss Haskell. The Fear of Falling in Love by Mason Deaver. 
because in the story, our main character, Neil, is set to fly across country with his childhood friend and current friends with benefits, Josh. But then Josh tells him that he's in love with him. And obviously all hell breaks loose, but they're both still going to this wedding. However, Neil is going to bring a different date now because he doesn't want Josh to get the wrong idea. He doesn't want to lead Josh on, you know what I'm saying? So Josh is one produce. <laughs> And his new date, Wyatt, which is his roommate, is the other produce. And Neil is now bringing Wyatt to this wedding as his date. And they're mixing the produce. They're mixing the produce in the same bag, which you shouldn't do, according to Haskell. The bag is the wedding. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think that that was that bad of a comparison. I think that this actually works pretty well. <laughs> sure. So now we're gonna go on <laughs> and talk to the next person. Um, let's talk to this older guy drinking some coffee on the bench. That's so cute. Talk to Sir Tiffy Cashian. What ho, lady? Spiffing day for a walk in the park. What? Spiffing? Absolutely. Top hole. What is happening? <laughs> this seems inappropriate. I'm gonna get demonetized. Can't stay in chat all day, don't you know? Ta-ta for now. Oh, goodbye. That was it, that was the conversation. Um, Sir Cashian didn't really give me much, so we're gonna move on to a different person. Who is this? Cecilia. Let's see what Cecilia's got. This is a pretty little courtyard, by the way. Greetings, have you come to gaze in the rapture and the natural beauty of Falador's parkland? I have, currently. Lots of trees and stuff. Trees, I so do love trees and flowers and squirrels. <gasps> Cecilia, my girl, this book. Okay, this is perfect. <laughs> I'm having a blast, I don't know about you. So the book that I'm choosing, just based off of this little part that Cecilia has said, is Magnolia Parks uh, by Jessa Hastings. Um, hello, I'm in a park in RuneScape. This is called Magnolia Parks. There are trees and flowers and stuff on this cover. I'm sure there's a squirrel in here somewhere. Okay, there's not, but there's probably a squirrel in the tree somewhere, honestly. They always are hanging out in the trees. Perfect. <laughs> and if you haven't noticed, I am exclusively going off of books that were in my last book haul video because all my books are still packed up. They're all in boxes upstairs and these boxes here are also books. I haven't opened any of them. So this is what we're doing. Magnolia Parks. Um, I still like really don't know anything about this one. Uh, the FOMO and hype has got to me. So I'm going to be reading it. Um, I've heard that it is like Gossip Girl meets something else. Again, I should have looked it up before this video, but I don't remember, but there's like, Gossip Girl-esque things going on in this story. And that's literally all I know about it. Um, it's kind of a chunker. I'm excited to see what the fuss is all about. I've heard some mixed reviews though. I've heard that it's phenomenal. I've also heard that it's like just not actually that great. And people are again, hyping things up for no reason. So I am excited to see which side I fall on. Okay. Let's go into town. I think we've had enough of the park. Oh my God, we have an estate agent. Hold on, there's an estate agent here. Let's see what he has to say. Nice mustache. Um, tell me about houses. Let's, let's hear about it. Wizards experiments. They found a way to fold space so that they could pack many acres of land into an area only a foot across. They created several fold to space regions around Gelinor. Wait, wizards? created a space where it's like they folded the land to fit in a smaller space. Why do I feel like that concept happened in All of Us Villains by Amanda Foody and Christine Herman? I feel like that happened in that story. So based off of this conversation with this estate agent, <laughs> I'm gonna choose All of Our Demise by Amanda Foody and Christine Herman. <laughs> so in the story, it's like dark magic. You can consider these people wizards. And there's this Hunger Games-esque situation going on where all of these kids are put into this certain blocked off area, estate area, <laughs> and they're like fighting for their lives using dark magic. And I swear I, I could be making a false memory because it's been quite a few months since I've read the first book, but I feel like I remember someone being able to like get to somewhere very quickly. And it was like, almost like the land folded and made it shorter. I could be talking out of my ass right now. I truly don't know if that's the truth. <laughs> but regardless, these kids are basically fighting for their lives to gain the glory and obtain the highest power of magic to be within their family for the next so many years until the next blood moon comes again, which is when this game happens. Why is this dwarf, this, okay, this dwarf is trying to talk to me right now. He's drunk, hold on. I knew it was you. Matey, here, have some good stuff. The drunken dwarf just gave me free stuff. A beer and a kebab. What a guy, what a guy. Let's come out here, have a drink of beer. Here we go. 
Yum, that was beautiful. Someone's just dropping all these coins everywhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take them. Um, okay, so there's no one really here that I think I wanna talk to anymore. I'm going to pick up my Kit Kat and we're going to teleport to this like home base called Lumbridge. <laughs> so look, we're reading my spell book. You ready? There we go. It's bookish. <laughs> All right, so now we're in Lumbridge. Let's go into this chapel. Let's go into this chapel and see if there's anyone that we wanna to talk to. Prayer tutor, maybe. Father Eric, here we go. I remember you. Oh, it's been so long, my friend. It's a nice place you've got here. It is, isn't it? It was a bit older, built over 230 years ago. You don't say. Oh, that's it? That's it, really? Oh, let's talk to Count Check. He's a vampire. <laughs> Aren't these graphics just phenomenal? <laughs> okay, terrible news. Is there something I should know? Yes, be warned. The travelers of these lands face danger from the outside. Okay, Count Check is basically just a cute little character to make sure that your account is safe. <laughs> um, so, but he is basically saying that there is danger that you can't always see. And he's a, a monster, you know, he's a vampire. Um, for this conversation, I am going to be choosing a cosmology of monsters by Sean Hamill. Hello. This works because not only is he a monster and this book is about monsters, but it is also about notorious things unseen by some of the characters. So our main character's father saw monsters and created this like shrine to them with the wandering dark, which is an immersive horror experience that the whole family operates. And everyone in the family can see the monsters, but Noah, our main character, is the only one that lets them in. So in relation to this conversation with Count Check, we could say that Noah lets them in. Noah lets in other people by giving them his password and then his account is no longer safe, just like his family is no longer safe in this story because he's letting in the monsters. I'm like really using my imagination and stretching all of these prompts, but I think I'm doing pretty well given what I have. <laughs> so thank you, Count Check. We now have four books on the TBR. Let's talk to one more person. Let's uh, go for a walk. I actually think that I remember this being not super safe. Oh, here's Abigail. Let's talk to Abigail. Help, why? She's a quest. I can start the quest. Um, I mean, I could start the quest. Let's see, what's happened here? We were invited to a house party on an island not far from here. Something felt wrong about the whole thing, but we went anyway. The house seemed pretty creepy, but everything was going fine. We were all having a good time. And then we got attacked. I tried to save her. Huey bought me enough time to find an old boat. I went back to get him, but it was too late. I'm scared that he won't make it. <gasps> you have to do something. They can't get away with this. But going back to like, what is the situation at hand? They went to this house party and it was creepy, but they went anyways. And then obviously all hell breaks loose. I think that I can stretch that story to fit The Pallbearers Club by Paul Tremblay. This is actually my buddy read for this next month in my book club, because in this story, we have our main character, Art, who is not a cool kid. He's a 17 year old high school loner in the late 1980s who listens to hair metal and had to wear a monstrous back brace at night for his scoliosis. He also started an extracurricular club for volunteer pallbearers at poorly attended funerals. Odd, but a good cause. But his new friend thought the pallbearers club was cool and she brought along her Polaroid camera to take pictures of the corpses, which is super weird. So was her obsessive knowledge of a notorious bit of New England folklore that involved digging up the dead. And there were other strange things, terrifying things that happened when she was around, usually at night, but she was his friend, so it was okay, right? Decades later, Art tries to make sense of it all by writing the pallbearers club, a memoir, but somehow this friend got her hands on the manuscript and well, she has some issues with it and now she's making cuts. And the first sentence of the synopsis is, what if the coolest girl you've ever met decided to be your friend? So we can make that and the fact that they're in high school kind of go together and think that maybe at least one of our main characters, that maybe the cooler one, who knows, goes to these house parties that our friend Cecilia, is it? Abigail. Cecilia was our last bestie. Much like the house party that Abigail and Huey went to, and now their other bestie is stuck at that house because of some eerie, creepy, dark things that were going on. 
much like the eerie, creepy, dark things that are going on within this pallbearers club. And the last sentence of the synopsis, she has issues with it and now she's making cuts, much like this friend group where one of them has been cut and is left back at the house. I think that that works. That's going to have to work. Again, grasping at straws. <laughs> and there it is. Paul Bearer's Club is on the TBR. Thank you, Abigail. I will do your quest later tonight. Okay, I straight up was almost just gonna start playing. So we're filming though. <laughs> Based on our conversations with our newfound best friends, our official TBR this month is The Feeling of Falling in Love by Mason Deaver, Magnolia Parks by Jess Hastings, All of Our Demise by Amanda Foody and Christine Herman, Cosmology of Monsters by Sean Hamill, which by the way, is the book club pick for Jan's Full Moon Book Club, which I am a co-host for. Our live show is on September 10th. So come read it and chat with us. It's going to be a riot. We're very excited. And then the last book on the official TBR is The Paul Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay, which this is a cute little stack. However, we have a couple other books that we will be adding to this TBR, which we didn't get the prompt for from any of our RuneScape friends. I am still reading City of Brass by S.A. Shockerboardy. I did actually try to start it yesterday. So I'm like a couple pages in. I haven't not started it. I will at least be finishing City of Brass since I have started it. And then also my book club pick of the month is Babel by R.F. Kuang, which I am so freaking excited about and so excited to be discussing it within my book club and a few other people in the coming future. But yeah, was this the stupidest video I've ever made? Quite possibly. Possibly. Is it even a valid TBR game? It is now. I hope it was somewhat interesting. You see a glimpse into what I do in my free time most days now. And with that, I have 10 minutes to walk my dog and leave to make it to my dress appointment. So thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. If you are still watching, then leave the swords emoji down below in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I always appreciate your support. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye.